Hi everybody and welcome to Dye Time. I am Amy from From The Cauldron and today I'm going to be dyeing this yarn cake. Now this is Donegal yarn which is 87% wool, 13% Donegal viscose. It's a non-superwash wool and these specks all out through, through, throughout this keep their colour, they, they don't dye. And this has been wound into a cake and it's been sitting in this water and vinegar for probably a couple of hours now. I set this up when I started doing my dyeing and now I'm finally at this one. Uh, I have here two grams of, oh, that needs stirring. <laughs> this is two grams of violet acid dye from DT Craft and Design. Now, there we go. Right. Now what I'm going to do is just add this to here. There we go. Oh, there's still a little bit more that hasn't dissolved. And I'm going to let this just sit in, in this uh, water for a little while. There we go. Yeah, got all the particles out of that. I'm glad to see that the water level has covered the yarn. Uh, there is acid in here. Uh, it's been it's been soaking in water and vinegar for like a couple of hours. And what I'm hoping is that on the outside of this yarn cake, it will be a really nice deep violet. But as we go as it goes through the yarn cake to the middle it'll get paler and paler, hoping, hope it will make a really nice fade. I don't know, this is the second time I've dyed a cake of yarn and my first attempt was a huge disaster. <laughs> so the reason I'm doing it this way is simply because I only have one pot. Uh, I only have one dye pot that this will fit in and that's currently being used. Over there, see? And I've got another one on the stove. So I'm just going to let this sit here in the acid and vinegar and just just until my dye pot is ready and then I can kettle dye this. Now this, this, this equipment is all dedicated for dyeing and uh, I, when I measured out the, the dye I did wear my mask and gloves. Right, my dye pot's finally free. So I've transferred that yarn in there. Now I'm going to just pour the rest of that dye water in. Yeah, I'm going to need a bit more water. I want this yarn to be covered in water. Oh, a bit more. Yeah, there we go. I'm happy with that. So I'm just going to turn this on, cover it up and just let it sit there and hopefully it will absorb all the dye. I'm going to keep checking on it. Yeah, I'll keep checking on that. Once it's heated up, hopefully it will be about 30 minutes that it will take for all the dye to absorb. I don't know, but we'll see. This has been on the heat for over an hour now. I have been checking on it and that is a beautiful, beautiful purple. Yeah, there's a bit of a runoff, <laughs> a bit of a mess happening there. And yes, the water isn't completely clear yet. So, but what I'm going to do is just turn it off the heat, turn it off, cover it up and just let it cool down in there completely. And if there is any of that color still in there, once this has cooled down, I will use it to dye something else, but I want to give this yarn as much chance as possible to absorb as much of that yarn, as, as much of that dye as possible. This yarn has been cooling in the pot overnight. And as you can see, there is still uh, dye left in that water, but I'm not gonna waste it. I'm just gonna gently squeeze that out. I've got some more yarn pre-soaking, so I'm gonna use that soon and I'm just going to, what I'm going to do now is just run this under a bit of cold water there will be a little bit of bleeding because it was sitting in that in that uh, dye water 
all night but I'm not going to really wash this out now I'm going to just give it a little rinse it doesn't actually seem to be anything coming off which is great and I'm going to let this dry off as much as possible and then I can reskein it and then wash it properly if we have a little look in here see if there's any oh yeah look there's some very pale and it looks like some some uh yarn that hasn't actually died there's some i'm hoping this will be a really nice fade fading yarn so i'm gonna let this dry well it's november now so i don't know how well i'm gonna get this dried but i'll be back when i can wash this properly this yarn hasn't completely dried. I didn't think it would do because it is November and it's cold. <laughs> so I didn't think it would dry all the way through. It did dry a little bit, but um, after two days, I decided to just wind it very carefully into this skein so I can wash it properly. Now, this is non-superwash wool, so I don't want the the water to go on the wool to run on the wool and then um, because that could felt it so I'm just filling up this bowl the sink here with a bit of cold, cold water washing up liquid hopefully that hopefully there shouldn't be too much runoff as I did do that initial rinse It's actually looking quite good to that water. It doesn't look like there's any colour coming out of that at all, which is fantastic. I it always makes me happy when there's no water, no colour runoff. So I'm just going to rinse this through a couple of times, and then I can hang it out to dry properly. And here is the finished dyed yarn. Now, when this was in cake form, I did try and peek in a little bit to see how far the dye had gone. And it looked like there was a lot of dye on the outside and then nothing on the inside. So I was, as, as I was winding this, I was preparing myself to have to maybe re-cake re it in the opposite direction so that this would be in the middle and then dye it again. But as you can see, there is dye all the way through and it's fantastic. You can see the dark bits these would have been on the edge on the edge of the of the cake but wow this looks great and I really really like how these little pops of color come through they don't pick up any dye I'm not sure what the fiber content is of those but they don't seem to pick up any dye whatsoever so they really sort of pop when it's that dark purple and then if you sort of have a little look through the skein you can see there's a lot of lilac running through it and yes as you get further into the middle of the cake there is less lilac and more white but because of these little pops of color it's not completely it's not completely white you've got these pops of color and then you've still got the dark patches of purple the little pale patches that just go the whole way through and this will look really lovely as something like a shawl maybe or um, a scarf I'm not really sure but I think it looks fantastic and I really oh I really like the sort of mottled effect here um, you can see where the the yarn was sort of crossing over over itself has, has made that um, sort of mottled effect and yeah this is I'm really really happy with how this has turned out thank you so much for watching this video I really hope you enjoyed it do please click like and subscribe to this channel. I publish a new dyeing tutorial every Monday around about 6pm UK time and I do like to experiment with different fibre types, different dyes, different techniques. Um, I really really like how this has turned out dyeing it in the cake, cake form so I will definitely be dyeing um, this dyeing yarn in a cake again. It was a lot of fun and it looks spectacular. Um, maybe next time I will uh, rewind it so that the darkest colour is in the middle and then dye again, dye it again another colour. I think I'll do that. Yes, I'm going to do, <laughs> I'm going to do that. I've decided I'm going to do that. So keep an eye out on this channel. Uh, subscribe so you don't miss that video whenever that comes out, <laughs> whenever I get around to actually dyeing it. Thank you so much for watching.